Hello and welcome to another fantastic video. Today we want to talk about the top 10 facts about classical music composers. Music is a piece of art that goes in the ear straight to the heart. For this list we present a list of facts about the greatest music composers of all the time. So be prepared for a classical journey you may never regret. If we missed any of your favorite music composer let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to never miss a single fact again. Number 10. Ludwig van Beethoven. The German composer whose deafness almost drove him to suicide. He was the first musician to be paid with no obligations other than to compose whenever and wherever he desired. Beethoven's father, a music instructor, had always intended for Beethoven to be a child prodigy. Beethoven's father was an alcoholic who used to physically beat him for playing incorrect notes. He was subjected to mental and physical abuse on a daily basis, and he was forced to train for days on end. According to legend, Beethoven was forced to stand on a stool as a kid in order to reach the piano keys and was beaten for any mistakes. Beethoven was never married and has no children. He was madly in love with a married lady called Antony Brentano. We don't know what caused Beethoven's hearing loss. For the last two years, he has avoided virtually all social events since it is difficult for him to tell people. However, his hearing loss never stopped him from composing. Even after he lost his hearing, he could still hear the music in his head. His housekeepers also described him as sitting at his piano with a pencil in his mouth, touching the instrument, so he could feel the vibration of the notes as he worked. Number 9. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He insisted his children shouldn't be breastfed. Feeding infants on barley water instead of milk was common practice among the middle classes at the time. Mozart was equally determined that his children shouldn't take the milk of a stranger. He wanted the child to be brought up on water, like his sister and himself. But unfortunately, Ryman died two months after he was born. Only two of Mozart's six children survived infancy. Mozart had a pet starling. Starlings are wonderful imitators. And the one Mozart brought home from a Vienna pet store on May 27, 1784 had been singing a movement from one of the composer's innocent, brilliant songs. Mozart's starling was his constant friend. It was there for the composer's relocation to a ritzy Vienna apartment in the Dongas. It was there for the births of two additional sons, Karl Thomas Mozart and Johann Thomas Leopold, as well as Johann's death a month later. It saw Mozart achieve international acclaim for his symphonies and arias. Number 8. Johann Sebastian Bach. Johann spent 30 days in jail for quitting his job. He wrote an amazing coffee jingle. Bach apparently loved coffee enough to write a song about it. Schweig stille, plottert nicht, be still, stop chattering. Performed in 1735 at Zimmermann's Coffee House in Leipzig, the song is about a coffee-obsessed woman whose father wants her to stop drinking the caffeinated stuff. Some of his music may have been composed to help with insomnia. Some individuals are embarrassed to confess that classical music, particularly the Baroque style, makes them sleepy. Be embarrassed no longer. According to Bach's earliest biographer, the Goldberg variations were written to assist Count Hermann Karl von Kaiserling overcome insomnia. A botched eye surgery blinded him. When Bach was 65, he underwent eye surgery. The couching operation, which was done by a traveling surgeon called John Taylor, involves pushing the cataract deep into the eye with a rough tool. Post-op, Taylor gave the composer eye drops that included pigeon blood, mercury, and powdered sugar. It didn't work. Bach became blind and died soon after. Meanwhile, Taylor went on to botch additional musical operations. He would execute the same operation on the composer Georg Friedrich Handel, who also became blind. Nobody is 100% confident that Bach is buried in his grave. There was one minor problem. Bach had been buried in an unmarked grave, as was usual for ordinary people at the period. According to craniologist Wilhelm Hiss, a dig team did its hardest to locate the composer but Instead found heaps of bones, some in several layers laying on top of one other. Some mixed up with the remnants of coffins, others already shattered by the cutting of the diggers. Number 7. Robert Schumann. You write to become immortal, or because the piano happens to be open, or you've looked into a pair of beautiful eyes. Robert Schumann would often plunge his hands into the entrails of a slaughtered animal to heal his ailments. He wanted a career as a concert pianist. Schumann only turned to composing when he injured his finger using a homemade device meant to hold up his fingers while rehearsing. Schumann was so anxious to succeed that he believed the crude instrument would get him there quicker. 
Instead, he ended up severely hurting his two fingers on his right hand, instantly terminating his goal as a pianist. He made his first suicide attempt soon after leaving law school. Schumann's brother Julius, as well as Julius' wife, Schumann's sister-in-law, died from severe complications emerging from the global cholera pandemic of 1833. Their deaths is just too much for Schumann to bear, and he suffered his first episode of severe melancholy, which led him to commit suicide for the first time in 1833. He was extremely shy and quiet. Much to the dismay of his best friends, Schumann was extremely timid and would prefer listening rather than speaking. He liked to spend time in calm and peaceful settings and he was known to go for walks in the countryside where he could appreciate the sounds of nature. While he was timid in public, his music was very open since it frequently showed what mood Schumann was in. For instance, any time he would suffer sadness, there was great sorrow in his music, but when he was healthy, his romantic composing side would return and bring him back to a road of health. Sad Ending Because he suffered depression throughout all his life during a period when mental illness was widely misunderstood. He had quite a hard existence. Eventually, his symptoms grew too severe, and he was hospitalized in a mental asylum where he died tragically. Number 6. Johannes Brahms The young Brahms was forced to play the piano in dance halls to contribute to the family's income as they were so poor. Embarrassing early compositions? An early beginning, Brahms started writing when he was only 11. However, when he got older, he found them a little humiliating and destroyed the bulk of them. Sleeping on the job. Brahms reportedly offended his host when he heard Liszt play his own sonata, in B minor at the court of Weimar. Claiming that he was tired from traveling, Brahms fell asleep while the piece was being performed. New Paths Robert Schumann was so pleased with Brahms' skill, when they met that he was prompted to write an article entitled Neue Bahnen, New Paths, which earned Brahms a lot of attention. Number 5. Richard Wagner. Unlike most famous composers, he had no unusual interest in music as a child. Wagner had no special interest in music until he'd found the theater as a youngster and discovered that most successful plays of his day were set to music. He popularized leitmotifs, which would later become the foundation of many classical film scores. It's hard to imagine what film soundtracks would sound like without leitmotifs, Wagner is frequently credited with creating leitmotifs. He didn't, they were already in use by time he arrived on the scene, but he was the first composer to utilize them widely. The design of his personalized opera building, the Bayreuth Festspielhaus, featuring the huge stage and a small, concealed room in which to hide the orchestra. Its design ensured that the audience would be gazing at the singers and set design, not the orchestra. Number 4. Frederick Chopin. Chopin played the piano in the dark throughout his entire life. He always would put out all the candles in the room, and even while performing at an event or party, he would ask to dim the light in the room. He was timid, and only performed about 30 public performances in his career, he preferred to play to small gatherings in the salons of affluent Parisians. Chopin was a young star. He began writing and composing poems at age 6, and played his first public concerto at age 8. By the time he was 12, Chopin had already played in the drawing rooms of numerous Polish nobles and produced unique works. He got the music genes from his parents, his mother was a piano instructor, while his father was a flute and violin specialist. Chopin's famous opus 64 Waltz is nicknamed the Little Dog Waltz. Apparently inspired by George Sand's dog who was running in a circle chasing its tail. Death and last words. Of all, the sickness couldn't have been entirely in his mind, Chopin died of TB at the age of 39. When he died, his final words were mother, my poor mother. Heart transplant. One of Chopin's dying requests was to have his heart taken from his body and sent back to Poland. This was likely because he had a phobia of being buried alive. Number 3. Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. He was a man of many mental health issues. One particularly unusual habit of his was supporting his chin with his left hand while directing. This is because he reportedly thought his head would fall off. His music was not always successful. Although Tchaikovsky's brilliance is now widely acknowledged all throughout the globe, he was not always successful in his musical career. In the beginning, his instructors believed he had no special talent for music. Further down the line, the famous ballet Swan Lake was not received favorably following the premiere. Critics were disappointed both with the music and the dance. 
it only achieved fame after the death of the composer, becoming one of the world's most popular ballets. He died from drinking water. The composer's death was a tragic accident. On the evening of the 20th of October, 1983, Tchaikovsky attended a restaurant on Nevsky Prospect. While he was there, he requested a drink of water which was straight out of the faucet and not boiled. The following day, he suddenly felt sick, despite being in excellent health in the days before. A doctor was summoned, and the diagnosis was cholera. His cholera might have been fake. Some historians still believe that cholera was a probable cause of the composer's death. Firstly, St. Petersburg was going through an outbreak of cholera and providing unboiled water during an outbreak would have been highly dangerous. Also, Tchaikovsky was suffering from frequent indigestion. He was extremely careful about his nutrition and wouldn't have let such a mistake pass. Cholera is a very infectious illness, therefore it seems strange that his funeral was open casket. All the above leads many to believe that he terminated his life by committing himself after his reported sexual connections with guys emerged. Number 2. Georg Friedrich Handel His father disapproved of his love of music. If Handel's father had had his way, Handel would have never become a renowned composer. His father didn't allow him to play music at home. As a youngster, Handel had to sneak into the attic of his house to practice the clavichord his mother had sneaked into the family. His best friend almost killed him in a duel. A big metal button on his coat rescued Handel from almost certain death at the hands of his closest friend and composer Johann Matazan. The fight broke out when Handel refused to give up the conductor's chair during the concert. When the young composers couldn't resolve their dispute, Matazan challenged Handel to a fight. Handel nearly died from one of Matazan's sword thrusts, but the big button on his coat deflected the blow. The adversaries eventually reconciled and were friends until Handel died in 1759. Although he lived to be 74 years old, Handel was plagued by health issues throughout his life. He had a stroke when he was 52 years old, which immobilized his right arm and prevented him from performing. Many regarded his fast recovery a miracle since they didn't expect him to perform again. He also suffered from cataracts and was blinded after a botched operation to remove them in 1751. It's become a habit for audience members to rise during the performance of the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. Nobody knows why he did it, but the widespread belief is it was out of respect for the masterpiece. Number 1. Joseph Haydn There are two skulls in Haydn's grave. His head was taken by phrenologists and a new skull was placed in his tomb. In 1954, the actual skull was restored but the replica was not removed. He sang as a boy soprano, Haydn had such a wonderful singing voice that he began singing in a church choir at age 5. Many think he was religious, Haydn committed many of his works to God. He grew up performing in a church choir, and his mother wanted him to become a Roman Catholic priest. He was Mozart's mentor. After Haydn met fellow Austrian composer Mozart, he offered the younger composer some guidance. Mozart was already a famous composer, but Haydn was able to assist Mozart and throughout their friendship, Mozart nicknamed his tutor Papa Haydn. In addition to being Mozart's tutor, Haydn would perform in string quartets alongside his pupil. Mozart composed a series of string quartets to dedicate to Haydn. He taught Beethoven. While his friendship with Beethoven wasn't as deep as with Mozart, Haydn did instruct Beethoven. Haydn tutored Beethoven when Mozart died away and was unable to teach the younger composer. The lessons didn't continue long since Haydn was busy composing and touring across Europe thus Beethoven ended up learning with other instructors, and the rest is history. However, Beethoven reportedly claimed that he learned nothing from Haydn. He used humor and messages in his works. When writing, Haydn would frequently incorporate comedy or other unique messages in the music with one example of this in his string quartet in E-flat major. He would employ fake endings to make the audience think the piece was done while there was still music remaining. As far as a more serious message, Haydn wrote his farewell symphony. During the piece, performers would blow out a candle before departing the stage one at a time. He was famous when alive. During his lifetime, Haydn was the most renowned composer living, nevertheless, he felt that Mozart was a superior composer between the two of them. Even if you don't like one piece, you may usually discover another of Haydn's compositions that you do enjoy. He was safe when Napoleon invaded. At the conclusion of Haydn's life, Napoleon invaded Austria. Fortunately, Haydn didn't have to worry about his safety since many people knew and liked the composer, Napoleon assigned two of his workers to protect Haydn. If you enjoyed learning about the classical music composers give this video a like and share it with someone else. 
What's the strangest fact you've ever heard? Tell us in the comments below. Until next time, always remember to stay fantastic. See you soon.